In the last part of the series, part 27, we saw Yahshua speaking to the Gentile woman. He told her that he was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman showed her faith, and because of it, her daughter was healed. Yahshua again showed what happens to those who have faith in him. Yahshua also spoke to the Pharisees, showing them that their traditions of men they held on to made Elohim have no effect in their lives. Yahshua told the Pharisees that it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles them. The Pharisees rejected this teaching and of course continued to reject Yahshua. Yahshua is continuing in his ministry. The Pharisees have come out from Jerusalem just to see him personally and question him. As we are halfway through the gospel, it is important you really have a good grasp on who Yahshua is and what his complete purpose is. There is so much clutter that surrounds the subject of him. Before I went into the gospel in part 12, I explained that the understanding surrounding him is where many people start to drift. There is not much argument in regard to the Old Testament, but there is a lot of debate surrounding the New. The reason being is that people always try to place Joshua in a box that completes their overall view and purpose of him. Many people want to selfishly claim the Messiah for their own personal benefit, but don't want to understand his full purpose. The most important thing you must understand in this world is Yahshua. There is redemption through the blood of Yahshua, and it's extremely powerful. There is no limitation to the power of the blood. I know many like to place certain limitations on him and say who he's for and who he can save and who he won't save. I'm not a judge of anyone. I don't know your family tree. I don't know who you're mixed with. I don't know the sins of your forefathers. All I know is there is redemption in the blood of Yahshua, and he is the Messiah sent in the world who paid the price of sin that the world was born into from the sin of Adam. There will be judgment against all who reject him. There will be judgment against all that have sinned against Yahweh's chosen people. There will be judgment against all that have sinned in general and have not sought out redemption and repentance. I am not a judge of you or anyone. Many would like this channel to speak judgment against others for the sins of their forefathers, not necessarily for the sins of the individual today. My main point in this series is to teach and illustrate to you clearly you must believe in the one whom the Father has sent. If you believe in him fully and give your life to completely follow him, you will be redeemed. If you do not, you will be judged harshly. Judgment is coming, and my only purpose is to make sure that you have a clear understanding of the only one who can save you. So you must know him. Listen to his words and let the Ruach HaKodesh speak to you individually on what he wants for you to do. I end every one of my videos with, I love you all, because it's true. I want you to be redeemed. I want you to see the power of the blood of Yahshua manifested in your life. I want you to feel and be led by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. I want you to be rid of the bondage the world seeks to trap you in, and I want you to be set free. This only comes from acceptance in Yahshua, so he is who you must know. So let's continue learning about him. Let's begin. We last left Yahshua in the region of Tyre and Sidon, where he was confronted by the Gentile woman. Yahshua departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on the mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Yahshua's feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the Elohim of Israel. Now Yahshua called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat, and I do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Then his disciples said to him, Where could we get enough bread in the wilderness to fill such a great multitude? Yahshua said to them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven, and a few little fish. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fish and gave thanks, broke them and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up seven large baskets full of the fragments that were left. Now those who ate were 4,000 men, besides women and children. And he sent away the multitude, got into the boat, and came to the region of Magdala. This part of the ministry can bring about much controversy. This is the same miracle recorded in Matthew 14 when Yahshua fed the 5,000. Yahshua soon identifies two distinct feedings of multitudes in Matthew chapter 16. The controversy 
is who was being fed. Mark chapter 7 verse 31 shows that he was in the region of Decapolis. I briefly spoke about Decapolis in part 13 of the series. Decapolis during the time of Yahshua was a city east of Galilee in Samaria. It was very much a center of Hellenistic culture. The controversy that surrounds this is that many of the multitudes that were being fed were Gentiles. Verse 31 said they glorified the Elohim of Israel, which to many said that this was the Gentiles because this is how they referred to Yahweh. Others say this is not true. Because there is not enough evidence on either side, I do not teach on it because the answer is not definitive enough. The takeaway you should have is that Yahshua did another miracle of feeding the multitude. Do not get drawn into controversy about scripture that is not clearly defined. So then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and tested him, asked that he show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. The scribes and Pharisees were coming to trap Yahshua up again. They were hearing about the things that Yahshua was doing. They were testing him to see if he was the Messiah. Maybe they wanted Yahshua to call fire from heaven like Elijah did. But Yahshua calls them out. No matter what he did, they were not going to believe because they were not truly following the Father. They were hypocrites. The things he had already done and said should have been enough, but they were requiring more. Yahshua said a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given. It makes me think of how many people deny Yahshua today, always requiring him to do this and that for them in order for them to believe. Yahshua does not work in this way, and those that require this from him will not get what they're looking for. Don't be one that believes only when destruction is almost upon you. At that time, it may be too late. That time is now, because destruction is upon you. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Yahshua said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, Is it because we have taken no bread? But Yahshua, being aware of it, said to them, O oh, you a little faith, why do you reason among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So the disciples, walking with the bread of life, who had just done two miracles of feeding the multitudes, they got worried when they realized they forgot to take bread on their journey. Yahshua immediately tells them to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They initially thought he was talking about them, not taking the bread. But Yahshua corrected them and explained that he was speaking of the Pharisees and Sadducees. You see, the Pharisees and Sadducees were going around spreading disbelief and doubt. This was their leaven. They were trying to catch Yahshua up so they could put his movement to rest. The disciples were walking with Yahshua and still got worried about not having food, though they witnessed two times him performing miracles of feeding multitudes. Maybe the Pharisees were getting in their head and causing doubt. Yahshua warned them to not let this happen. While he was talking directly to the disciples, he's speaking to you as well, because you face this as well. There is no shortage of people that seek to bring you doubt and uncertainty about Yahshua and his purpose in your life. Beware of this. When someone is bringing you doubt, in disbelief, look at them as a sort of Pharisee or Sadducee. Beware of their leaven. When you entertain it, you can allow those thoughts to grow into something that produces a strong lack of faith. Beware of them. As you grow stronger in your walk, you will encounter these types, and they do not seem like they're trying to hurt you, but help you. Then over time, you will see a lack of faith that was not there before. Beware of it. Stick to Yahshua and his words. This is why it's important to be grounded in your belief, like he explained in the parable of the sowers. Watch part 22 to understand this parable. When Yahshua came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, 
and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. Yahshua answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Yahshua HaMashiach, Yahshua the Messiah. This is a very important piece of understanding. Yahshua and his disciples came into the region of Caesarea Philippi. In understanding these scriptures, understanding where they were gives greater context. Caesarea Philippi was north of the Sea of Galilee. Today it's called Benias. The city is significant because the ancient Canaanites built an altar to Baal there. The Greeks and Romans built sanctuaries because there was a cave of Pan. The cave of Pan was located in Caesarea Philippi, the place of the pagan gate of Hades. It was in this area that the first king of Israel, after Israel and Judah split, Jeroboam, he led the northern kingdom of Israel into idolatry. Yahshua asked his disciples at this place of surrounding idols who the people say that he was. None of the people seemed to realize that he was the Messiah. But Peter said, You are the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. The Ruach HaKodesh revealed this to Peter. Yahshua said he was blessed because this was not anything man would just understand on their own, but something revealed by the Father. This goes for you as well. Those that believe is not based on your searching, but the revelation of the Father to you which you accepted. He then says to Peter, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now Peter's name in Hebrew is Cephas, which is translated rock or stone. The Roman Catholic Church used to say that Peter is the rock of the church, and therefore the first pope. But this is not what Yahshua was saying. This understanding is false. Just add it to the list of the many false things that the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Peter is a fraction of the twelve who sat with Yahshua. Yahshua himself is the entire rock. The church itself is built on the Messiah, the rock. It can also be said that the church is built on the confession of Peter that Yahshua is the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. When Yahshua said he would build his church, it first shows that the church was not established yet. Yahshua said the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against the church. Remember you are the church. The church is not a building or an organization. It is not a place that you go to, but it is something that you are. Evil will not prevail against you. Evil will not conquer the people of Elohim. Though they may attack you and at worst kill the body, you are forever property of the king and evil will never prevail against you. The only way it happens is if you allow it to. From that time, Yahshua began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Adonai. This shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of Elohim, but the things of men. Then Yahshua said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. After the acknowledgement that Yahshua was the Messiah, he then started explaining what would come later of him. So we are now at a new point in Yahshua's ministry. He has now introduced the cross. We will speak later on the cross because the word used in stricter translation is state. But the disciples are now being introduced to the fullness of Yahshua's ministry as we are. We understand that he will suffer and be rejected. 
He's spoken on it briefly before, but he actually was teaching them the things to come. So as Yahshua was explaining this, Peter then speaks. Now remember, Peter just confessed that Yahshua was the Messiah. The next time he speaks, he then says that what Yahshua is prophesying will not happen. Notice how Yahshua handles it. He didn't correct Peter. He rebukes Satan. This was not Peter speaking on his own, but Satan using Peter. Understand this for yourself. Peter was one of the strongest disciples, and he was continuously taken advantage by Satan, like when he denied Yahshua three times. Peter was not indwelled by Satan, but he allowed Satan's suggestion and his thoughts to take hold. If Peter had his way through his thoughts, Yahshua's mission would not have been completed. No one is perfect. Peter allowed Satan to place a lack of faith, fear, and concern in him, which he communicated out loud. It could have sounded like he was caring for Yahshua, but Satan was just conniving. Peter was speaking for Satan, attempting to stand in the way of the plan of Elohim. Yahshua did not allow it. You must be mindful that you do not let Satan take advantage of you, spreading his doubt and disbelief, disrupting Elohim's plan for your life. Yahshua then says some very important things. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. This needs to be an understanding for anyone who follows Yahshua. You must be willing to forsake this world in order to follow him. This world can be enticing and the pride of life can be hard to break, but if you are to follow him, you must first deny yourself. You must be willing to suffer persecution. You must be willing to go through hard times. You must be willing to lose family and friends. You must be willing to give up who you were when you were without him. Your former self must go away. This is something that is not told to most. Many in the church today expect to live a great life because they believe in Yahshua. This is just not true. The world hates him, and if you are a true follower, they will hate you too. Expect it. He knew that he was going to suffer on the cross, but he took up his cross and completed his purpose. We all have crosses to bear. It doesn't always mean death, but don't be mistaken. It sometimes can. You need proper expectations. Living for him is not an easy cakewalk. It's not for the weak. You must be strong and be willing to lose it all for his sake. He said, for what profit is it to a man that if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Yet the culture of the world is literally teaching us to do just that. Follow these celebrities that have admittedly sold their souls. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a happy meal. And do as they do. That's what the world teaches. They have literally sold their soul for temporary fame and fortune. And this is what is marketed to us and our children. It's not worth it. I don't want fame or notoriety. I want to please him and be found acceptable on his day. I want that for myself, my family, and for you, whoever is watching. If you live in America, you are in danger of this the most because this culture totally wants you to sell your soul for a bigger house and better car. The best way of understanding that is to play the game of Monopoly. My family often has family time when we just play board games. Monopoly can really bring out the worst in us. The objective of the game is to put others out of business and destroy their lives so we can have it all. That's the foundation of America. It's the premise. Live well and be happy while destroying the weaker. That's survival of the fittest. Yahshua has not promised you that you will live well. He promised you will have the Holy Spirit, which will give you all the fruits of love, joy, peace, etc. All found in Galatians 5. Only thing is you must use them. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Take the scripture and write it down and read it every day. Do not be one who will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father. People today may feel empowered because the world enables them to be evil, to be selfish, greedy, wicked at heart, to be, as Yahshua said, an adulterous and sinful generation. Maybe you are one who wants to be part of this world and be accepted. Maybe you're a teenager or young adult and you just want people to like you, so you do not fully live in Yahshua. You are sometimes ashamed to be a follower of him because you fear rejection, that people look at you as weird or weak or not fun. 
This feeling that you have of being ashamed of him will cause you to burn. You think the rejection of your wicked friends or whoever it is that you're trying to get to like you is a comparison to the rejection you will receive from Yahshua when he comes in his glory? It's a really dumb decision seeking approval from those you clearly know are wicked rather than facing the rejection but being accepted by your creator, the one who made you. I can't explain how dumb of a decision it is, but yet many are still making it. I hope if you are one of them, that changes for you today. So let's look at some of the things you should know from this part of the series. 1. Yahshua did a second miracle in feeding a multitude of 4,000. 2. Don't get caught up in controversy about scripture that is not clearly defined. 3. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given. If you are waiting for him to prove that he is the Messiah, you may be waiting for nothing, but in the end you will reap judgment against you nonetheless. 4. Don't allow people to bring you doubt and uncertainty about Yahshua and his purpose for your life. Beware of them and their leaven. When you entertain it, you can allow those thoughts to grow into something that produces a strong lack of faith. Beware of them. 5. Stick to Yahshua and his words. This is why it's important to be grounded in your belief, like he explained in the parable of the sowers. Watch part 22 to understand this parable. 6. Yahshua himself is the rock of the church. The church itself is built on the Messiah. 7. Remember, you are the church. The church is not a building or an organization. It is not a place that you go to, but it is something that you are. 8. Peter was not indwelled by Satan, but he allowed Satan's suggestion in his thoughts to take hold. Be mindful of your thoughts and beware of the suggestions that Satan places in. It is often used to limit the plan Elohim has for your life. 9. You must be willing to forsake this world in order to follow him. This world can be enticing, and the pride of life can be hard to break, but if you are to follow him, you must first deny yourself. 10. You must be willing to bear your cross for him, just as he did for you. 11. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Don't sell your soul to obtain the wicked things of this world. 12. For whoever is ashamed of Yahshua and his words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. 13. Do not reject Yahshua in order for this wicked world to accept you. If you do this, Yahshua will reject you. You do not want this. Be smart. Yahshua is coming close to the point of rejection in his ministry, though he only came in truth and to help the world. It saddens me to think of this rejection. I understand that many of you will face the same rejection. You want to follow him, and the world wants to reject you for it. Oftentimes, it's many that go to church every Sunday that are doing the biggest rejecting. Do not let this deter you. Your reward is great. You don't have much time left though. Finish the race. Don't let the modern day Pharisee bring you lack of faith and fear and doubt. If you know the Messiah and are walking with him, Things may become uncomfortable initially, but that does not mean you should ever doubt him. Let your troubles be things that build your faith, and as he continues to take care of you, grow in your faith of him. The disciples saw many miracles and still had allowed a lack of faith to seep in. Don't let this be you. Be strong in him. Understand that you will be rejected, possibly by those closest to you. This is a cross you must bear, so bear it. Serve him. Be the church. It's not about going to church, but being the church. You are not made for you to have a job, some kids, and live on a house with a white picket fence. You are made to serve him, for you to bring others to him. You are made to worship and bring others to worship him. Fulfill this mission. When you come across those who want to feed you with fear and doubt, walk away, just as Joshua did the Pharisees. Be around those who help strengthen your faith and remove yourself from those who weaken it. Sometimes that means that you may be alone. Again, this may be your cross to bear. My point is, bear your cross. Don't be ashamed of him. Be proud to be a quota shim, being set apart. Reap your blessings and don't let anyone take them away from you, placing the suggestions of fear and doubt against you. Be strong and commit your life to Yahshua. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it. If you haven't already done so, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. 
I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I would love to give a special thank you to those who have donated to this ministry. Your contribution is a huge blessing to me and helps me continue on with this assignment. Your support is a blessing as I wouldn't be able to continue without you. Thank you for your obedience. I'm humbled by your support and I'm very thankful for you. Thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.